Hello and welcome to the Beyond Shakespeare podcast and today's special discussing episode, first of many discussing episodes, uh, diving into the world of Christopher Marlowe and specifically performances of his plays by the wonderful The Show Must Go Online. And my special guest will be talking about a production of Edward II in just a moment before we get to that I just want to talk about a uh, project that's coming up in October on October the 29th Beyond Shakespeare is uh, producing a Lord Mayor's show a recreation of the 1621 Lord's Mayor's show in approximately where it was originally performed it's not going to be an exact reconstruction but it is going to be an opportunity for lots of people to come along get involved uh, in silly ways we want our audience in costume we want people to turn up dressed as whifflers as green men or women uh, as aldermen, as signs of the Zodiac, and in fact all sorts of monarchs and other uh, peoples, uh, not because it will necessarily improve the pageant that we're performing, but because it's a bit of a laugh. There is a sign-up form that will be in the show notes if you'd like to be involved on the ground floor, or if you just want to be kept in the loop about what's going on. It's all going to be recorded as much as we can. We're going to be producing some special things for the podcast. That's all going to be coming out as much as possible online, so that you can be involved even if you cannot physically be there. So we're going to try and make that as inclusive as we possibly can. So uh, do check the show notes. There will be links there for the sign up and uh, keep an eye out for future announcements. But that is enough of a plug from me. Let's get to Edward II. Let's get to some Marlowe. Let's get to my guest who is. Please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Kevin V. Smith and I'm a theatre artist from Chicago, Illinois, and I'm directing Edward II for The Show Must Go Online. Excellent. So this is a show that uh, from uh, if you're listening to this when this first goes out, people listening to this in the future, this this the, it has already happened. But if you're listening, this podcast first goes out. This is coming up in uh, a little over a week's time by the time this podcast goes out on the 9th of June. That's 9th of June 2021. And yes, it's going to be online. It's going to be available. Links will be in the show notes so that you can get to this show. But as I'm talking to Kevin now, uh, the show is in production in, uh, and uh, is coming together. And so, uh, Kevin, could you tell me a little bit first about the play, Edward II, why you're doing it specifically, and, and to a degree, why is uh, the show Must Go Online doing it? Edward II is um, a play from 1592 by Christopher Marlowe, as you said, and tells the story rather ingeniously and quite faithfully historically although there are some major changes in, uh, that Marlowe does brilliantly in, in my opinion um, tells the story of uh, England's 14th century monarch Edward II who had a very very troubled reign uh, is best known for having male favorites who historically are considered to have been his lovers one was actually referred to as his husband um, so it's the story of his very troubled reign and how he was eventually, uh, his lovers were torn away from him by the nobility of the land, who really didn't approve for a number of reasons. And then finally how he was deposed and overthrown by his queen, who was the last person, in fact, Queen Isabelle de France was in fact the last person to successfully invade England, which I think is a fantastic little tidbit that I that I love. So uh, he was uh, overthrown by his queen with the help of the nobility and, and the people of England at the time uh, in favor of his then 14-year-old son. Um, so it is the story of the, the troubled and I think troubled and lamentable reign of Edward II. For me, this play has always meant so much to me. As a queer person, I think this play has just been a touchstone to me because I, I I don't know the exact, you know, if this is exactly true, but I do believe that when Marlowe wrote this play, it was one of the very first queer, as we say now, queer protagonists in Western drama. And the homosexual love story, the gay love story, notably between Edward and Gaveston, is so... Um, it's so there on the page and and the the everything that happens to Edward and happens to Gaveston over the course of the play as a queer person you know I, I have always just related to it so much and um and and I think this play is so beautiful because even Marlowe touched on something so deep in the 16th century that still resonates with queer discourse today which to me is and you know this was 
in the 16th century before the, so uh, the sociological construct of sexual identity, homosexuality even existed. So this play is very, very special in my opinion. I know the show must go online. It's not only doing Edward II, they're also dipping into Dido and Dr. Faustus and, and the rest of the canon. Tell me a little bit about the, the, the show must go online. I, 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 you're first in the interviewing schedule, as it were. So in a sense, you get the, the, the first stab at this. Uh, we'll see if everyone Great. agrees further down the line. <laughs> So uh, the show must go online is an uh, online theater company uh, that was formed in response to the pandemic, I think at the very beginning of the quarantine in the spring of 2020. And it started just kind of, if I understand correctly, sort of on a whim. And then they were producing one play after another, one a week. Then eventually it got noticed by uh, by the BBC or some major news outlets and it kind of blew up and that's how I heard about it. So so yeah, for from I think from March until maybe November of 2020, they were producing plays at a breakneck pace and they they just had, a, in my opinion, a huge influence over the development of the format of Zoom theater. So I've worked with them three times as an actor and really enjoyed it, found the, the process with them to be so transformative. And then when they announced the, the month of Marlowe, which they decided to do, um, I was lucky enough to have been asked to direct Edward II. Uh, yes, talking about a digital production, talking about what, what happens to Marlowe on Zoom, uh, what happens to this play? What, do you, what are your plans for this play? I mean, you're a, a little over a, a week away uh, mm -hmm. before you actually go up. Um, so I'm assuming you're relatively far into the, the production process. You know, where are you now? Where where do you hope to be in in nine or so days time? So as of today, um, we've just begun rehearsals. So it's a very, very fast process. We have a week and a half of rehearsals. I spent the last month in research and conceptualizing my ideas, how I wanted to, to present this, um, creating the world, uh, the whole aesthetic of the show. And so right now it's, it's about giving that world to the cast and, you know, working through the scenes. And because of the, the nature of this process, as an actor on Zoom with the show must go online, you're also a costume designer, a lighting designer, a cinematographer. So my approach is really to try to plunge everyone into this world that I've created in my head over the course of the last, I guess, month of diving into this play, and then hand it over to them to, to put all of their artistry and all of their heart into it. So yeah, we've staged at this point two scenes, and we started at the end, which was challenging <laughs> and interesting. But that's how it works with the schedule. So, well, you know, the, you you always know where you're, you're where, what you're leading into. Uh, that that's way. true. Um, that's true. So you're always going into a, a place of uh, of knowledge rather than right. into a place of uncertainty. So, in uh, you know, it's a dense play. It's it's not a short play. There's a lot of text. Um, when we did uh, with our exploring group, uh, our initial work with it, just the momentum of the text. It's just. It says it's unrelenting. How have you, uh, you know, I, I assume you've got a, a planned running time and an idea of the cut now. Um, well, what sort of uh, adjustments also technically do you have to do with the text for Zoom as, as well? Are there bits you just went, OK, this bit we might not be able to do uh, or, 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 you know, the challenging questions of, um, of, of uh, some of the interactions uh, with actors on stage are quite violent. And and right. how do you stage those um, yeah. as well? Yeah, great question. There's nothing in the play that we're not doing because because of it being too difficult. I've been interesting from the beginning of exploring this idea of authenticity because I as an aesthetic um, on Zoom because I found this to be kind of the defining principle of Edward II's reign, that there's a quote when he was deposed that apparently he said to the nobles, basically, forgive me, but I could not be other than I, than I am. And so this idea of like who he is and his authentic self basically put him at odds with everyone and everything, but he couldn't do anything but be himself. And so that really struck a huge chord in me and inspired a lot of ideas. So in terms of the the aesthetic of what the actors are doing, I thought it would be much more interesting as opposed to doing Zoom stage combat, so to speak, or Zoom kissing or, you know, that kind of thing, to find different ways, non-representational ways and more abstract, surreal ways to depict that 
for the violence, for example, sound became the thing for me. There's a piece in the text where when Edward is held captive, he says they're drumming and then they're drumming relentlessly and they keep me up all night and they don't let me sleep. And so this idea of percussion became really central to the concept for me. And I thought, what if we use percussion and sound in order to represent violence? So that in that way, I'm just interested as an experiment to see how how that affects the performances, if the actors have something more visceral to, to react to that they can actually hear, as opposed to some kind of staged Zoom stage combat, which is so technical. And these love scenes, because also cent really central to this staging is this love story between uh, Gaveston and Edward. I thought, how do we, how do we, give that emotion how do we give those feelings to the audience um in a way that because the audience knows right that we're not in the same room and the suspension of disbelief with zoom is something that's fast fascinating and fantastic when you can do that right but i thought what if it was through abstract gesture through more in the realm of dance theater through self-touch as opposed to and mirroring of gestures and that kind of thing how we can portray portray those love scenes in a way that maybe can create a more I guess a more emotional reaction in the audience as opposed to the audience going oh that was cool how did they do that trick so I've, I've all, every, everything I've been searching for how do we not do the trick how do we do something that actually that reads in a different way and might provoke some kind of interesting feelings in the audience one of the reactions, because Edward II does have a good uh, modern performance history. One of the things that you know people latch onto is the violence, they, uh, or the you know the history play angle. But it's a right. it is a, another way of looking at it as a series of lo love stories. Yeah, and the thing that the other main thing that struck me about Marlowe and why I feel he's so special is that when I read this play, I just feel the love that he has for his four very complicated protagonists. And for me, the protagonists are Edward, of course, uh, Gaveston, the Queen, Queen Isabella, and then the young prince, who eventually becomes king at the end of the play. The love that Marlowe feels for these characters just jumps off the page to me, that even though they're complicated, and even they, they do things that make me so angry you know the way edward t treats isabella for example it's mm. just i mean the misogyny it's uh, is there the structural misogyny that she suffers it's all there he doesn't spare us marlo doesn't spare us of anything but i thought if i could bring the love that i have to this play for this play in the same way that i feel marlo bringing it for these characters and if i could it's my hope that to to transmit that love that I feel for this play to to the to the team and then Marlowe's huge gentle bleeding empathetic heart is all over this this one so it really made sense to me let's let's try to go there we can't rely on comedy there's very little of it in this mm. play we can't rely on hijinks so how do we create a space for the actors that's that can be safe and also where they can be brave and where we can be vulnerable and try to but to go to that place on Zoom, which is hard because you're alone in your bedroom, right? It's a good point when you're talking about uh, being uh, being safe or feeling safe, because in a sense, yes, we're all in separate spaces, but it's a very confined space when you're working on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and when you work on something that is uh, or potentially as emotionally in uh, intense as this, it's very easy to get stuck in your head, in you know, yes. especially in, in, in the rest of the world issues as well, even though hopefully... Right things are opening up and you know there's light at the end of the tunnel this is having acted for the show must go online three times i've i feel that's a big asset in this process because that we have um, quite a few new actors who haven't worked with the company before and just to be able to tell them i know how you feel and and to have that experience really of doing it i'm trying to bring all of that knowledge that i have in these processes with them which have been really transformative to the table you know in order to try to to try to do something that that serves the actor's process but also allows us to create to, to push the boundaries of what can be done on zoom to think of it more as a, a visual art form see where we can go in terms of the uh, creating a visually stunning and an engaging image throughout the entire piece which is important to me the flip side of this you know being alone in your room right at least for me, because I'm a very introverted person, kind of just works this way and processes things this way. But these these uh, experiences with the show must go online. Maybe I mentioned this before, but they've been really transformative for me. And so, I feel like the flip side of that is, you know, you're working with yourself, of yourself, 
in your room with these roles that, you know, there's so much space in, I think, early modern texts and inside of Zoom theater, there's so much space underneath the text. There's so much space inside of the process for the actor. Cause we have like 19 actors who are all kind of like making their own film, mm -hmm. right? Their own little film and they're all gonna play simultaneously. There's so much room there for that personal artistry, I feel in a way that's that's a little bit different from when you're working um, together with a group in person. That's been my experience. And so I'm trying to do everything that I can to foster that kind of spirit inside of the rehearsal process. And this is a great play to do it because it's, it's um, you know, it's so sincere mm. in a lot of ways. So um, how do you go about casting uh, a show when you have the potentially uh, anyone from around the world with a Wi-Fi connection yeah. um, <laughs> and a laptop? <laughs> yeah, it, that casting this show, the casting for this, I did it myself with the help of the production team who, you know, has so much experience and were really amazing in terms of we have a very short schedule. So availability and that kind of thing became paramount for me. Yeah, the show must go online, put out an announcement. Anyone can apply, you don't, you know, any level of experience. And then in the end, I had, I think, you know, I had a really long list of people to go through. And I was just kind of constant going through the names and the the headshots and their reels and their resumes over and over again to try to put together this puzzle in my head. Because we have this opportunity to do it online, having an international cast was something that was super important to me. I love international collaboration and that's something that over the course of my career I've done a lot of. And so we and we do end up we have actors from four different continents, so all different time zones, which makes things really crazy and fun sometimes with all different backgrounds and and types of training and, ex and experience levels and so yeah, that was a big consideration when I was putting together the cast because I wanted to I wanted to create also opportunities for the cast to be able to work with and meet other artists from different parts of the world because that's been a, a really amazing facet of working with the show must go online for me just i i didn't know any theater artists in the uk before i, I did shows with them and now there are so many that i've made connections with and it's you know opened up a lot of doors in that way and in terms of uh, back and forth and, and friendships and that kind of thing too so uh, right. Well, we are uh, sadly running running low on time. Could you uh, give give a mini roundup of where to find uh, Edward the uh, Second when it is? Um, so, Edward the Second by Christopher Marlowe, production of the show Must Go Online, uh, will be performed live on Zoom on June on Wednesday, June 9th, twenty twenty one. You'll be able to find all the relevant links on the show Must Go Online social media. So, their Instagram, Twitter is a really good place to. To, to find more and um, tickets will be on sale. I think through Eventbrite, there'll be links up. And the show also, if, if you buy a ticket, you don't have to watch it live, although it's fun. There's a great group of people who watch the shows live together and, and comment on them, but you can, you'll be able to, to watch it later if you, if you can't watch it live, if you, with the, if you purchase a ticket. I, I think that is also through their Patreon too. They have a Patreon. And I encourage everyone to donate to the show must go online for their amazing work. Go to their Patreon, support them, check out what they've been doing. Uh, they created an inc inclusive and really beautiful space for, for um, theatre makers. All that remains is to thank Kevin for joining us on this, uh, shall we say, uh, this flash discussion session. Uh, hopefully, further down the line, uh, when the show's all over, you can come on again and we can talk in more detail about the production, how it all went. All that remains is to thank you for coming on and uh, appeal to our, our wonderful audience at home to uh, catch the show and uh, and uh, give them as much feedback, encouragement and or money as you can. Uh, thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you, Robert.